So let's take a look at the Velvet Revolution. The Velvet Revolution is from my home country, the Czech Republic. I'm a Bohemian, Kingdom of Bohemia, Maximilian de Moscow, Maximilian uh, and Marie de Moscow. We're Bohemians. We're not Germans. We're Bohemians. We're speaking Czech, not German. He probably knew German in addition to Czech, since Europeans know a billion languages um, versus the one language we know, right? So 1989. This is around, you know, the end of uh, Ronald Reagan, beginning of Bush. His term just got in. Uh, 90 is when the fall, the Ber Berlin Wall falls, 1991, somewhere around there. All these communist countries fall, the Soviet Union dissolves. So, 1989, Czechoslovakia's re Velvet or Gentle Revolution. Czechoslovakia has since broken up into the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic three years later. So, they used to be the Czechoslovakia Republic, now you got the Czech Republic and the Slovak Republic. They declared their independence in the Velvet Divorce. The Czech Republic is the modern inheritors of the Kingdom of Bohemia, Bohemia and its forest. Walt Whitman was a self-defined Bohemian. My great-grandfather was an authentic Bohemian, 100% blood and language. The Velvet Revolution happened eight days after the fall of the Berlin Wall and right after Pope John Paul's solid solidarity movement in Poland. Revolutionary fervor spread throughout the Eastern Bloc of former USSR countries in Europe. The Velvet Revolution happened after many demonstrated and uh, many demonstrations and marches failed to get the general public up out of their chairs and to flood the streets, which was the winning strategy for Tunisia and Egypt in 2011. A prolonged peaceful demonstration. That's how Egypt and Tunisia won. Prolonged peaceful demonstration. And in Czechoslovakia in 1989, Syria is getting murdered daily and so are our Palestinians. But with America's rich and wealthy culture coupled with the capability for a citizen journalist to get the on-the-ground version of the events, the true stories, what's actually going on, the Howard Zinn perspective of history from the bottom up, not the top down. And many times it trumps the sanitized version of the lamestream media, the chance for a slow blob, slobodon, slobodon. Slob, really? Slobodan Milosevic. Uh, Milosevic crackdown is remote and something did, crazy did happen. It would spark outrage amongst the general public. Vaclav Havel, the key revolutionary of the Velvet Revolution, said about the 1989 revolution that it had become clear that sooner or later change would come. The only question was when. The revolution is going to come. Howard Zinn says it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So when people start getting on the streets and demonstrating, how are we as a people going to react? How are the leaders, are they going to embrace it? Are they going to condemn it? Are they going to try to fight and have a military repression against it and kill lots of people and be like Gaddafi and just fucking murder people just because they're the state and they probably could get away with that bullshit? Or are they going to side with the people and they see their grievances, they're poor, or they have homeless on the streets, there's the lack of education and lack of, you know... Uh, I'm not sure totally with uh, Louisville, but uh, lack of plumbing, lack of electricity, lack of just uh, basic necessities that people need, lack of housing, clothing, um, you know, living in squalor and in uh, uh, oppressive and violent conditions. So, you know, it's time to revolt, Louisville. We need to revolt. It's time for a revolution. Valclav Havel, the key revolutionary of the Velvet Revolution, you know, said just it's not a, met, a question of, uh, uh, of when it would come. It, there was a, it was clear that it would become just a matter of when, right? So when is it going to come? And it was going to come. And it came on November 17th, 1989, a Friday. Uh, the riot police suppressed a peaceful student demonstration in Prague. They couldn't foresee how it would all turn out and that this would be the snowball that would trigger an avalanche, said Valclav Havel. Valklav Havel is going to be the first president of uh, the Czech Republic and the leader of the revolution, the father of the Czech Republic. Because that student demonstration forcibly put down by the police on November 17th, that provided the trigger. So the, the student demonstration, when the student demonstration was put down by the police on November 17th, that was a trigger for people to get up out of their chairs. Here, the police threw down the a student demonstration and the media fucking covered them up. They covered their fucking asses. I should have known Steve Burgeon was a fucking corporate media owned and bought and paid for a fucking little snarky little prick bastard. So don't fucking trust the media. Don't fucking trust the media. Even if the, li the liberals tend to be gatekeepers, if they don't talk about your shit, then people, nobody fucking listens to them. So 
um, it, it's best to get your own material out there. I guess I don't. I don't really know. Uh, I, I trust who you trust. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, so the the student demonstrations were forcibly put down by the police, and these are the same demonstrations where the students were given flowers to the police. So just like in Vietnam, but um, um, instead of like being in Vietnam, it was in you know the the Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia. So they were doing shit that they had saw in the '60s. Again, American influence. When America does shit, we know exactly how to do things, man. We know exactly what we're doing. We don't know exactly what we're doing, but we we do it cool, okay? Whatever we do, we go down cool, we go up cool. People people admire us all the same. It doesn't matter. I I knew a Vietnamese that just adored. America it blew my mind to be honest with you. Um, two to four million people were killed in Vietnam, and he just loved America. He just loved it, and he's just as alone and isolated as the rest of us were. So, the students were the ones who were given the flowers to the police, just like the hippies did during the anti-Vietnam War movement in the 60s or 50 years ago. The last time Americans decided to participate in their democracy, the 60s, and that shit failed, according to Hunter Thompson. That event sparked a series of popular demonstrations from November 19th to late December 1989, 22 years later. On November 20th, the number of peaceful protesters assembled in Prague had swollen from 200,000 the previous day to an estimated half million, okay? You get 100,000 people, then you're going to get the millions out. You'll get everybody. There's 1.4 million in Louisville, the greater Louisville area, but overall there's like 700,000 of us. 700,000, I mean, that's that's a big number. You get like 200,000 of us, they don't know what to fucking do. There's not enough cops to actually um, uh, police all of Louisville. The Robert White, the way he policed Louisville was just a presence. He, they got about 1,000 officers, and they just spread them out all over the place, driving everywhere so that they, people can see that the cops are out and about. They're out and about, and they're doing shit. They're doing things. So, um, Valclav Havel... He says, uh, well, uh, uh, so a half a million people come out after uh, a, a, there's a two-hour general strike involved all citizens of Czechoslovakia. It was held November 27th. Then the government left by uh, January 1st, so that's a month later. And the peaceful elections were held, and the government was overthrown without bloodshed. So the government just leaves. They throw elections. They got a new people in there. Those are the new people. Those are those stars of the show. Those, that's the new government. That's the democratically elected government. Regardless, they're the state now, right? They got the power of the state. They can do it as they please. They probably won't, but they have that power. Valclav Havel said that when you start to think that you're responsible for the whole world, that's when things begin to make sense. Havel stood up against a hardline communist, tyrannical, totalitarian police state who got power through democratic means and then took over. So their government used democracy to gain power, and then once in the door, destroyed democracy. They used democracy in order to destroy it. Since the communists were the majority, they took control of the government with a military junta, and they ruled it with an iron fist for like 50 years, until the peaceful, bloodless 1989 Velvet Revolution in Czechoslovakia. 1989 Velvet Revolution. So... Greece recently, in October of 2011, shut their entire country down with the National Day of Strikes. Europe's always striking. The entire world is telling America to stand up. Everybody in this world is telling America it's time to revolt. It's time for us to stand up. We need to stand up. We need to do it. Even Canada and Mexico are standing up. Uh, we need some leaders. We need some speakers. We need some agenda. We need to figure out what it is exactly that we're doing. We need to maintain peace and order. As soon as we go violent, that's when they're going to start, you know, fucking us over. We don't want to be fucked over. We don't want to die. We just want to, our message to be heard. And we have an important, we think we owe, uh, we, we um, um, have a message that can contribute to the national discussion. And I think all voices should be accepted in the national discussion. If, especially right now, this time, but in any time, really. Why wouldn't you, in the great pool of ideas, the best ideas should succeed. If it's a good fucking idea, it should just win. It should just win because it's a good idea. It shouldn't matter who proposed it, who said what to who. If it's a good fucking idea, you vote for it. That's how you vote. That's how you do government. That's how you be a city councilman. Like four city council people said that they didn't want to vote for that ban on campers. Nobody's allowed to camp in Louisville. If you think you're going to go camp out in the fucking parking lot, or if you're going to go camp uh, on the sidewalk, you're going to go camp on the fucking park, Nope, they will fucking arrest you, throw your ass in jail. If you're fucking homeless and you're camping out in the fucking woods, they can throw you in fucking jail too. I wonder if they're already fucking throwing homeless people in jail now. This is Louisville Metro City Council. This shit just happened. Okay, so the Louisville Metro City Council uh, vote to take everybody in Louisville's rights away, not just the homeless people, but everybody's rights away to camp if they want to camp on three 
uh, under three acres of land. Um, so, I what I was trying to say about that. It's, it's bullshit that they did that. Uh, they would go against the 99%. I don't know why they would go against the 99%. Um, so, anyways, Greece, uh, in October 2011, shut their entire country down with the national death strikes. The entire world is telling America to stand up. We should be standing up. And who knows if Louisville's poor and oppressed workers will heed the call. The labor unions have not been very strong here in Louisville. If the garbage workers and the bus uh, workers were to strike, this whole city would be shut down. So the, that's, that's almost key. The garbage workers and the bus workers. When they strike, whatever demands they are calling for will be the demands we get. You want greater democracy? You want more money in education? You want health care, universal health care? You fucking strike. Strike right now. Tark. You need a strike. It would shut the whole town down, including uh, including the, the garbage workers. That's uh, Martin Luther King died because of the garbage workers. Martin Luther King died standing up for the sanitation workers of Memphis, Tennessee. So, what is Martin Luther King? You know, one of the greatest prophets to ever grace the history of this planet. You know, why was uh, he having to? Fight for the garbage workers. Why was he there? So I'm not, I'm not being elitist. I'm just saying that great men are people that stay with their constituents. When you're fighting above them, you're supposed to rise with your class, not above your class. You're supposed to fight on the side of people. You're not liberating them. You're not saving them. You're equipping them to be stronger and better people. So, um, Greece recently stood up. They're always standing up in Europe. Uh, the 1848 White Arab Spring had that problem. The middle class could not connect with the poor. That's why Karl Marx was critical of the attempted but failed European revolutions of 1848. So the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. So the better example, I think, uh, compared to the Velvet Revolution or the Egyptian Revolution uh, for Occupy Wall Street is the Egyptian Revolution. Uh, the reason why is because I see the Egyptian Revolution as a work in progress. Uh, they ain't going to do things perfect, but hopefully when America gets on board, they can see what we're doing, see what they're doing, and we will rise together uh, with our revolutionary spirits. So we will we will figure out this world together. Um, but the, recently they won the Muslim Brotherhood once, so that means the people was able to get their candidate into office. The revolutionary forces was consolidated. Now you have a new president, a new system, and a new government in Egypt and that's how exactly how you do a revolution actually Egypt's had three revolutions in the last century Egypt's revolted and thrown overthrown the government three times in the last century we haven't done it since fucking 1776 that was the last time America revolted and I don't remember that shit and it was fucking powdered wig wearing slave owning you know aristocratic fucking Englishmen who used to fight for the fucking British so you know that's that's uh, uh not exactly people that I resonate with. There's not exactly the great fucking champions. I like the Haitian Revolution. Now that's some cool ass revolution right there. The Haitian Revolution. They know exactly how to fucking overthrow their oppressors. Nat Turner, he knows how to overthrow his oppressors. John Brown, Abraham Lincoln. So, uh, there's lots of lots of better revolutions. Abraham Lincoln had the 1863 Homestead Act, which was land reform. That's the last time we had land reform in this country. The squatters had special rights in Kentucky. If you're a squatter and you were farming an acre of land, that land was yours. No taxes. It was yours for free of charge. The second governor was giving that shit out. Land reform. They had land reform in Egypt in 1952. So 50 years ago, Egypt had land reform. I bet Egypt's got a more robust middle class than Kentucky does. I bet Egypt's got a better democracy than Kentucky does. 12% Kentucky? That's shameful. That's despicable. 12 fucking percent. You all don't know shit about politics. You don't know shit about life. You don't know shit about power. You don't know anything about anything. If you don't know about voting and about your government and how to put pressure on your government to get what you want out of them, do you even know who your representatives are? Do you know anything about the Constitution? You know the Constitution legitimates revolution. You know Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution legalizes revolution. Did you know that? Do you know you have more rights and freedoms when you combine Kentucky's Constitution with the American Constitution? Do you know this? You know that there is no absolute and arbitrary power al allowed in Kentucky, which would fight against the seatbelt law. So we got the mechanisms, we got the infrastructure. Now, if we just could learn it 
and know the rules better to the game and apply it, I think we can get reform. But if they don't allow reform, then we have to do revolution. Louisville, it's time to revolt.